one thing you can do, you can use uh, extra antennas because the extra antennas will observe independent mating, and at least one of them is likely to be strong. So that's 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 the most common technique that's that's used now. Otherwise, you can just amplify and hope that uh, hope that you can amplify your way through. Uh, one antenna up to increase the power. Not oh, really. So uh, if you only have one antenna, only have one transmitter, one receive antenna, you're kind of uh, you're kind of at the mercy of the channel. So whatever channel you get, you're stuck. Uh, you can do things like relay. So if you have friends, um, if you have a hundred friends, chances are there's one of them. That's, that's another flavor of using multiple antennas. Okay, um, these terms are random. Now cos goes from minus one to one, and sine goes from minus one to one, and the distribution of the distances can be arbitrary. So we can assume that um, these are zero mean, random variables. Um, furthermore, we're going to assume that uh, in the Rayleigh scattering, we assume that there's no dominant path, so the uh, variances are roughly the same. say is let uh, ui equal ai cos theta i, and let bi equal ai sine theta i. And we have a huge number of paths, what we get is the following. Sine and cos are now not functions of i because uh, in both cases the signal that's getting through is the same, it's just scaled and, and, and phase shifted. Sine 2 pi of t sum i equals 1 to n of ui plus cos 2 pi of t sum i equals 1 to n of bi. In the end, so in the end, we get sort of some sum of random variables multiplied by sine, and some sum of random variables multiplied by cos. This together is equation what are we up to now six. So. Okay, now we're getting somewhere because um, the amplitude from transmitted receiver is random, we want to say something about it, so we want to say something about uh, the probability distribution function uh, that we observe. Now, if n is very large, and I have a sum of n random variables, does anybody know what that distribution tends towards? Tends towards Gaussian. So um, you may remember, I talked about this a bit in digital communication. If you have a lot of random variables that are all added together and you don't know what their underlying distribution is, it doesn't matter because when they're all summed together, 
they tend towards the, uh, the normal distribution, the Gaussian distribution. So we have a lot of variables added together here. These guys are roughly Gaussian. A lot of random variables added together here. These guys are also roughly Gaussian. So we can say this would be equal to u sine two pi of t plus v cos two pi of t, where u and v are distributed Gaussian. Let me just write a couple of words about that. So U and V are approximately Gaussian random variables. Theorem, which you may have heard about in statistics, basically says that if you just take a bunch of random, uh, random events, sum them together, uh, the result is usually pretty close to the Gaussian distribution. Uh, that's the same explanation why when you plot uh, students' grades all together, um, there are a lot of random events that can contribute to your grade, depending on how good of a student you are, how you're feeling the day of the test. Uh, your emotional state, lots of things coming together that, that have a, a variety of unknown effects, but they all kind of sum together, and as a result, your grade ends up looking kind of Gaussian, so it's the same kind of idea. So what we want to know is, what's the amplitude of this signal? So this is a random signal. I have a sine component and a cos component, but I want a, sim I want a simplified um, I want a simplified sinusoid with a certain amplitude. I want to know what the signal strength is uh, because I've argued that I can compensate for whatever change, whatever the phase change is, but I want to be able to figure out what the amplitude is because that I can't really compensate for. That really tells me uh, how much energy I'm receiving. So it turns out um, if I have u cos a plus v sine a, this is equal to square root of u squared plus v squared sine a plus beta, um, where, and theta isn't really important, but just for completeness, theta is arc sine u over root u squared plus v squared plus uh, 0 if v is greater than or equal to 0, or pi, pi radians if v is less than 0. But that's not, I'm not really interested in the theta because I argue that I can compensate for it. What I'm interested in is that. So that's the new amplitude of the signal. Basically, the signal amplitude is as though I took a triangle. So what is this? This is basically the hypotenuse of a triangle. Um, I, and I put the I put two random two Gaussian random variables on the run and the height, on the length and the height. And then I ask you what's the length of the hypotenuse. 